Hi, welcome back to the, our tutorial series about how to build a custom LMS system with payload. I'm very sorry for not having a video this time as I could not really find a suitable place to record and also record my face so for the next few videos we will have to do without it. Now what we're going to do this video is creating basically a course detail page. In one of the last videos we dropped off or we left off creating this dashboard but now if we click on one of the courses we get rerouted to a 404 page not found and this is what we want to change this video. Let's pretty fast go to the course uh, to the source code we have here we want to create a route where we have under dashboard course and then have a, as a parameter a course ID and this is exactly what we're gonna do now so let's create a new folder course and a subfolder course ID and we created new two new folders let's create a page dot tsx page dot tsx and in here we can create our new view in here we want to create a const course page equals async async parameters course idea yes let's get that and in the next step we want to get the course ID const course ID like displayed here um, let's also export it right away but we don't really need this and let's get payload so const payload equals a weight get payload let's import it and we want to get it from the config promise so we need in here config and config promise but we need to import this as well let's get import config promise from payload config perfect another thing we need is the user so let's also get the user const user equals uh, wait get user we'll simply use our utility function that we defined previously and we have the user now with the user and the payload object we can get the course that the user clicked on try const result equals await payload find but we find the course by id by id and let's pass on our parameters we have it in the collection courses uh, actually I think we can take this we have it in the collection courses with the ID course ID override access that is very important if we later on change the access of a course or we want to make sure that the user is actually an authenticated user and we that's why we pause, pass it on and override the access and set it or not override the access access and set it on false with this done we want to save the course into a variable let course equal uh, double let's import the course from our parse types and it can also be null set this to null and assign our course if anything goes wrong here we want to catch that as well and lock the error console dot error i error get the error here and something we also want to do is to call the not found method from next.js because this is gonna reroute the user to the not found page if by in fact something cannot be found so return not found and that is something we get from next uh, navigation as you yes not found next navigation and also if we don't have a course let's check for the course we also want to return not found now we are next.js gives us the opportunity to define a custom not found page so for now let's just return course here and if we should click on a course like here auth settings we actually get an error because we did not await the params so let's do await uh, Params as well 
let's save it let's click again and let's wait a moment and we have courses here perfect let's go back now what happens ah, you know, let's simply reload what happens if we for some reason the user has not access to a course anymore or the course does not exist and he tries to reach a course that simply does not exist let's change this to an a and we get the standard standard not found page and this is a behavior we do not want we want to get the user on a custom not found page so for this we can make use of a feature by next.js by which we simply in the same directory where we want to catch the not found create a not found page so let's create new file not found.tsx and in here we can export default function not found and let's just take this for now in here in here we don't really need to type out all of this so let's go to the github repository and to the not found file simply copy paste all of this it's simply standard tailwind and next.js but oh, let's paste it only once if we save this and we go back to our page we should see something different the default export is not a react component in let's see no it should be a react ah yes there we are and we have a button with which we can go back to the dashboard if the course does not exist and if we click on a course that exists we now get to this view now in our course view we got now the course here course courses now let's rename this to course ah i misspelled it course let's copy this here and here we have the course here and of course we want to display the information that's kept within so let's create a diff that wraps all of this class name equals with full max with uh, four xl mx auto p6 so padding of six units we want a flex layout it is a flex column with a gap also of six in here we want to create a small button that links back to the dashboard so div again and link no actually we don't need a div here let's just link back href dashboard we link back to the dashboard we want a class name of inline flex items item center gap two text small so text sm text is also gray and on hover the text should be white hover text white Tra let's have a transition and duration of 300 and ease in and out now next to this it would be nice to have a small icon so let's import uh, we also need to import link L uh, no we have link we need to close the link element so back to the dashboard and link perfect now it looks right let's format the page format document and before the dashboard back to dashboard we want an arrow so we're gonna use the um, react icons arrow pack uh, react icons icon pack and we use hero icons so h i arrow left let's import this from hero icons one it's supposed to be text large and if we save this again we will have we should have our icon and you can see here our button now let's get to the main part where we're actually going to display the course information below the button let's just format this again why is it not formatting 
Okay, let's format it ourselves. Below the button, we want to display the course image. So div class name, it's relative and full width. It has an aspect aspect video. We want to flow. Uh, we want to hide everything that's that's overflowing. So overflow hidden. We have a border. It's gonna be a gray border, but without any rounding. And in here, we're gonna use the image tag, image, and the source we get from our course object, so course.image, and the image is a media object, and the media object contains a URL. URL, we have an alternative, an alt text, which is a course title, thumbnail with fill through uh, fill true and object cover cover that is all right and let's close the div and now we get an arrow what is wrong Hard. actually we need to import the image perfect now we have it um, this is gonna give an error because it is not sure if it has an image or if the image is a string or media, but we are, so we're going to ignore it for now. But of course, you could work around this and assign it to a separate media object. But for the sake of brevity, we're not going to do this. Then we are ready to display the title of the course. So h1, class, name. We get text 3, xl, and font bold. And let's get the title. So course.title. Below that we want the course description which is a p tag which is no we want text gray 300 not 400 and let's see how this looks. Of course you can style this however you want but if you followed the tutorial it should look something like this. Now below this list we want to display the curriculum. And for the curriculum, we're gonna create a new div. Div. And then we have a h2, so an h2 headline which says curriculum. It has a class name of text XL. The font is semi bold. Bold. It has a margin on the top of 6 and a margin on the bottom of 2. And we're gonna name, uh, gonna close this and name it curriculum. And below we're gonna have another list um, or another div, which is a flex, flex, flex column, and gap four. And in here we're gonna iterate through the curriculum of the course which we created in the data structure. Actually, now. Let's do this ourselves. Course.curriculum.map. And we have a block. And we're going to use the ID of this block. Did we use ID anywhere else? Cannot find name ID. Uh, let's. Yeah. Let's simply use this. And read. No, if now we're going to use the course or the block type. This is why we created this as a block structure because every block has its own type and we can exit this with easily with block type. So we have block dot block type equals video. So we want to differentiate if our block is a video block or if it's a quiz block. And if it's a video, we're going to return. Uh, return div key that is okay it's gonna be let's edit this <laughs> it has a key it has a padding of four units it has a border which is also gray which is rounded slightly and it also has a background background gray 900 Yes. And in here, we want to display 
the type of the block and the name or the title of the block. So let's create another small div which has a class name of text teal 400 to give it this um, glowing look. Teal 400 is font semi bold. It is also flex layout and we want to center the items with a gap of two. And in here, we're again, we're going to make use of the hero icons. So we're going to have HI video camera from hero icons one. It has text XL. Oh, XL, not LX. LX. Yes, this and the block title. Let's close it. And below that, we are going to display the duration. So let's open another div class name. It's gonna text SM text gray 400 and duration duration block duration. Of course, this is in minutes. Now we can close this other div as well and continue with the next block type but actually to make sure i think we can also already see the blocks with this type so let's go to our page wait a second and we see the video lectures of this course now let's do the same thing for the quiz modules so basically we're just gonna <laughs> copy and paste this and change this to quiz it has also a block title it has uh, it does not has a duration it has questions so questions questions and dot length and if that is zero I, if that is where is it and if that is zero or if that is not available and is zero, we remove the minutes. And also what we're going to do is we want to change the color to yellow. So we can easily differentiate. Ah, of course, also change the icon. So this time we're going to use the pencil icon, pencil, alt. And if nothing, we neither have a block of type quiz or of type video, we're going to simply return null. Now let's see how this looks again. Ah, and we have our curriculums. So that was it for this tutorial. In the next video, we're going to see how we can actually participate in a particular course. See you the next time.